So welcome to part two of overwintering your garden. And this is gonna be for growing a garden when you're really busy. So the previous presentation, part one, was about if you're just gonna walk away from your vegetable garden or parts of your garden for the winter. And the suggestions are to prevent the growth of uh, weeds by adding mulch, maybe consider doing a cover crop, or if you've had um, problems with soil-borne pathogens, maybe solarizing your soil. So this presentation, the second part is going to be if you are growing things, but you're going to be gone for the holidays, or if you're a school garden, if you're going to be gone for Thanksgiving and winter, these are just a few strategies that I've thought of on how to manage that. It's such a challenging time. I think a lot of the reasons, I think one of the reasons that a lot of people don't garden in the winter is just because they're in and out and they go off for holiday or they're, it's a school it's a school garden and nobody's there to attend it or a community garden and you're just not able to get over to your plot. So these are strategies for how to continue to, or, or to have the option of having a cool season veggie garden even through all the busyness of the holidays. So we'll talk about gardens that are growing but you're not there to attend them, things to consider and plants before success. It's so common for school and even community gardens to be um, growing and nobody's there. And this happens in the winter, but it also happens in the summer. Think about all the tomatoes that are planted at school gardens in the spring. Um, who's there to harvest the delicious tomatoes in the summer? Um, and it's also really common for all gardens, even my own during the holidays. So one of the things I wanna jump into right away is if it's a cool season, if, if you're after cool season veggies because they're nutritious and delicious, um, if you haven't planted them yet, January is not too late. You can completely avoid planting in the period from October to December and start your cool season garden in January. It won't work for all of the vegetables, but it will work for many of them. And I'll talk about the things you need to consider. And so if you're gonna let your garden bed rest from October to December, then just turning off the water Adding a layer of organic matter and maybe covering it all with mulch is one way to keep weeds down and to have your beds ready for three months later. So you're not letting them go dormant the whole season because um, otherwise they would be dormant from about October to late February, early March. And so that's almost six months. So consider maybe just letting them go dormant from late October. This year was kind of cool. But some years it's quite warm through early November and your summer garden can be doing well through early November. And you really only have to put your garden to sleep for like November and December. Um, it is important to note that February is usually the coolest time of year. So if you are starting cool season veggies in January, you're gonna need to keep an eye on them in February if we have a cool year. So if you'll notice, this is a, a planting guide from Grand Ghettos or Grain Ghettos. Um, and I, I really enjoy the graphics that they use and we're finalizing our veggie guide. So I hope to share that soon. But I wanna show you, this is some um, planting time for seeds. And then you see that the green is optimal, uh, dark green is optimal and the uh, um, light green is acceptable. And then the yellow or beige is not recommended. So if you look at most cool season veggies that you could plant in November and December right now, you'll notice that almost all of them you can also plant in January and February. So just because you don't have a garden growing through the holidays doesn't mean you don't get to have a cool season veggie garden. So you can see asparagus is a cool season but actually gets planted in the first of the year. Then you have your beets and broccoli, Brussels sprouts and cabbage your carrots, cauliflower, um, celery is one. You'll notice for celery that it's wanting to plant when the soil is a little bit warmer. So celery, celery may be one that you struggle with if you plant it too late. It likes the warmer temperatures of the soil, but quite frankly, it's cool enough this year that if you haven't planted celery by now, it might be a little bit too late. So celery is one that if you really want celery in your garden, it should be planted now. Um, Chives are one that you can, in most parts of the Inland Empire and 
San Bernardino County can be planted year round. I mean, maybe not in the mountains, but in the Inland Empire and deserts. Collards can be planted both in the winter and, uh, you know, November, December, and January and February. Endives, favas, kale, kohlrabi, leeks. Leeks are another one that do better if they're planted a little bit earlier, um, as well as onions and garlic. Lettuce um, can be planted both now and in January. And then you have your mustard, your onions um, do a little bit better when planted earlier, but still could be planted through January and February. Parsley, parsnips, peas, and uh, potatoes are one that's usually planted um, a little bit later. And then you have your radishes, your rutabagas, your spinach, and Swiss chard and turnips. So these are things that um, you can plant. You can see that most things that are cool season that you can plant in November, you can also plant in January. Brussels sprouts are another one that like to be planted early. So Brussels sprouts and celery are two that you might have trouble with if you're just skipping the holiday season and starting in January. So did you already plant a big cool season garden and then you're planning to be gone? Or are you part of a school garden and you planted a big season, a big garden and you know that you'll be closed for the holidays? Um, reach out to the helpline. We can help you. We can get photos of your location and uh, you can send us photos of your location and we can help you figure out how to protect those plants while you're out. It's important for you to note um, or for us to note how old your plants are. Um, think about if you have an automatic watering system. Maybe there's someone around who might be able to keep an eye on the things, on the things that you're growing. And um, in the future, or maybe you already did, plant hardy types of plants that doesn't need that don't need as much attention. And so I have a list at the end of some plants that will do a little bit better with some wintertime neglect. Okay. So one of the things to think about, um, people are worried about plants getting to be too cold while they're away. And um, they have frost cloth, which looks very similar to shade cloth. I'll show you a picture in just a moment, but it's white instead of black. And um, it can be tempting to cover your plants while you're gone, but um, be careful unless there's someone who can un uncover them periodically um, or use a light cover that's not touching the plants. I would say when in doubt, don't cover them because we can get warm spells while you're gone. Um, the plants might get too humid and rain can also collect on the covers. So here's an example of like, these are some lettuce. They're really nicely covered with some sort of plastic. Um, these are gonna be super happy, but see all the moisture that's collecting in there. This is not a system I would recommend if you're gonna be away from your garden for more than a couple of days because that moisture can get to be too much. And if we get not a lot, if, if there's not a lot of sunny days, so the moisture sort of drips down into the soil, then this could be a breeding, breeding ground for disease. Um, they also have these, I don't know what company this is, but this is like a full on plant cover. And if you're gonna be gone for a long period of time, like more than a couple days, then I wouldn't use these kind of covers, even if we're expecting cold weather. Um, I mean, you know, you can do what you want depending on the type of plant it is, but if the weather turns and we get some really warm weather, if there's a lot of rain and the moisture, too much moisture collects, um, then this can be a problem. So like, here's another, oops. Here's another example of like a floating row cover. It has a frame. And I really like this one because you see, it, you see they can pull it back. They have a nice system. I don't know who Debbie Kong is. It's 2012, she took this photo, or I think it's, uh, they took this photo. And this is a really nice system. And so they have their lettuces and kale, and um, I'm not sure what we'll mix in here. And so this is a floating row cover that is not touching the plants and that they can take it on and off. This one may be a little bit better if you're gonna be gone for a little bit, but if, if we get a rain or something, then it can weigh down in between the frame and it could damage your cover and also end up damaging them. This one here is on the lower right is well secured and it's probably not going to squash your plants if you get rain, but it's possible that um, if it's really moist that um, uh, some sort of mold or fungus could take off it here. So I would say when in doubt, if you don't have someone who can come check the plants, I wouldn't cover them while you're gone. 
but mulch is a great way to protect your plants. And I should have added more photos for leaving your um, beds completely empty. Um, Cause if you're gonna do that, I would cover your beds with mulch. Here's the inside of a floating row cover. And you can see they've mulched in there. These things are gonna help keep your plants um, warm. It helps keep the weeds down. And it also help keep, helps keep some pests away like snails and slugs, which are pretty common in the cooler season when there's moisture. So some of these things, this little pine needles right here, maybe some straw also, um, this may be straw, that would be a lot of pine needles, but you never know, pine needles can also be used. They're used a lot with strawberries, keep the snails and slugs out. Um, just be aware of um, fire danger in your area. If you live in a high fire danger area, you may not wanna mulch everything. With this type of really um, easily flammable mulch, you may wanna use a larger bark mulch, like an arborist wood chip kind of thing. I, I recommend using organic mulch, although you can cover things with plastic sheeting. And for trees, the recommendation is to keep it several inches from the trunks of the trees. And you can keep it a little bit away from the veggies, but the trunks of trees, trees are there for a long period of time and they have a little bit of a different mechanism. Um, the, most of the vegetables are only in the ground for a few months. And so mulching right up to the base of veggies doesn't seem to be as much of an issue, okay? So you can be mulching your veggies to protect them while you're gone. And that will also, you can see some grasses starting to come up in these veggies and mulching them while you're gonna be gone will help keep the weeds down, okay? It's okay if something, I put it there twice, it's okay. It's okay. Some things may, be, may die during the holidays, um, just when you go back, see what's left and pick up where you started and then plan ahead for next year. We'll have lots of uh, classes throughout the year um, that are seasonally tied and seasonally appropriate. So in the spring, we'll do classes about waking up your garden. And then next fall, probably a little bit earlier. This has been a topic I've wanted to cover for a few years. And a little bit earlier, we'll talk about a garden like a low maintenance winter garden. So be on the lookout, check our website for those classes. And then you can plant some foundational plants that can overwinter and keep your beds from looking sad if that's something you want to avoid. So I like things like rosemary, um, sage, and thyme. Those are three that will do well with very little maintenance throughout the year. So a few elements for planting success when you know you're not gonna be there too um, often during the winter. And then I'll, I'll wrap up because it's almost 10 o'clock is you wanna know your soil. It's important is to know if it's well draining. So like, I don't usually have an issue where I am with water building up around my plants. If, if anything, I know with my soil, my plants are gonna get dry. So if I'm gonna be gone for a little bit, I need to prepare for my plants to be dry, um, not for them. Even if we have rain, sometimes it's not enough. And so maybe you live in an area on the Southern side of the Valley or in Redlands area or someplace with heavy clay-like soil where um, water sitting may be an issue. One of the things to think about with fruit trees, we didn't really talk about fruit trees, but if you're gonna be gone and there's a rainstorm expected and you have troughs around your fruit trees to sort of hold the water in the summertime when you water, you may wanna break those open so that um, water doesn't sit in the trough. So if you have a trough like this around your fruit tree, there's your fruit tree, you may wanna cut open part of this trough for this little berm here to allow water to drain out if there's rain coming when you're gonna be gone. Um, you want to, do you have an irrigation system? And is there someone to access it besides you if you're away? They have really fancy irrigation systems that are remotely accessed. And those are really cool. There's also irrigation systems where you set up a baseline for a typical summer day. I think that's where they do it or a typical winter day. And then as rain comes, they back off of that baseline and they cut, they, they stop the irrigation when there's moisture. Some irrigation systems can be pretty expensive, but there's lots of rebate programs throughout the county and throughout the state. So if you're interested in um, irrigation system, um, check out your local water district's website or your conservation district's website. Chino Basin Water Conservation District also has information. And um, throughout the year, they give away um, 
brain systems as incentives for joining programs, to raffle them off. So be on the lookout for those. But if you have an irrigation system, since it looks like we're gonna have a dry year, then making sure that your plants have water when you're gone is important. Uh, and then plant crops that aren't gonna mature or time your crops so they're not gonna mature while you're away. And don't plan to be gone when you have young plants. So if you're gonna be gone for Thanksgiving and you wanted to plant some lettuce next week, I would say hold off. Your plants are too young to be left alone. So here are some suggested plants that might be okay when left alone. Um, lettuces, if they don't get too dry or too wet. So that's gonna be a, you kind of knowing your soil, you knowing your microclimate. Some of it's just luck. Maybe it's having an irrigation systems, but system. But if you're gonna be gone for a week or so, as long as your lettuce doesn't get too dry or too wet, then it should be fine on its own. Peas are a great one to grow if you're gonna be um, away from your garden for a little bit, because if the peas get dried on the vine, then you can seed save from them. So bonus, and the artichokes are another one. If they're established, they can be sensitive to frost, but they'll usually grow back. Usually artichokes you're gonna plant after the last frost, um, but I have artichokes that are um, a couple years old and they're fine with uh, me not paying too much attention to them during the holiday season. Asparagus also, if it's established, carrots um, don't need a lot of um, attention. A lot of the herbs, they do just fine, especially thyme, sage, and rosemary, also oregano or marjoram. Those ones do very well with very little maintenance once they're established. And then all of the brassicas, as long as they're not babies and they're probably eight or so, six to eight inches tall, then you're just kind of waiting for them to be ready to harvest. So if you can time it so that you're gonna be gone while they're not ready to harvest and they're not young, then they should be fine as long as they have, you know, if they're getting appropriate water by like an irrigation system. Having mulch around all of these plants will help hold moisture in. And then if the brassicas, which I'll talk about them in just a second, give you a little list, um, if they do go to flower, which is usually a bad thing for your cabbage, for your broccoli, for your kale, we don't want them to go to flower. Um, but if you do have them go to flower, you could try to seed save from them. So the brassicas are going to be your beets and your broccoli, your Brussels sprouts, your cabbage, your cauliflower, and your collards and your kale and your kohlrabi. Are beets brassicas? I think they are. Turnips are not. Either beets or turnips. One of them is not a brassica. Maybe it's turnips are not brassicas. And then you also have um, your, what else? Uh, spinach. Oh, spinach is another one that would probably be okay to let it go on its own. Okay, so those are a few uh, plants. These are a few vegetables that, um, and peas to me are the really easy one. Peas and carrots, so I forgot to add radishes. The radishes mature in about 28 days. So just make sure if you plant them, you know, if you plant them the end of November, just know that they'll be ready to harvest um, around the end of the year. So keep that in mind. So with that, I think that's it for my presentation. I'll drop these resources into the chat. We'll post these resources on our website along with our video. And um, I encourage you again to sign up for our newsletter and to follow us on social media and to reach out to our Master Gardener helpline if you have any questions. And thank you so much for joining us today.